Hello and welcome to this small stream. The reason I'm on a small stream today uh, is that this stream's uh, tailwater and as you can see even this is carrying a considerable amount of water and colour. We've had a torrential rain for about a 36 hour period. Even coming here part of the roads were blocked. There, were, there was gravel all over the roads that had been washed down by rain so it gives you an idea of the substantial rainfall that we've actually had. So this isn't a, a day for dry fly, it's a day for nymphing techniques. And I'm going to go through all the types of nymphing techniques, starting with this one, which is the least invasive technique. And this is called simply the duo, often referred to people who use a clink hammer as the dry fly as clink and dink. And my nymph is a very simple hot spot pheasant tail nymph based on Sawyer's famous pattern and this pattern has probably caught as many fish in rivers worldwide as any other nymph pattern and this particular pattern is available or will be available very shortly at onstreamguide.com and I've got about 18 inches of depth and then I've got a very buoyant caddis pattern this is called a dancing caddis and this is a, not one of my own patterns this is a a pattern I use from the United States of America. This is from Doug Swisher, a very famous angler uh, who wrote a book called Selective Trout, which I highly recommend, by the way. And I, I tie this on a very short dropper, about an inch and a half, and 18 inches of depth. I put the on-stream guide hotspot pheasant tail nymph. And as I say, this is the least invasive nymphing method. Later on, we'll use heavier nymphs and look at what we call European style nymphing techniques. But let's see how the duo fishes first. Despite the very colored conditions, have you just seen fishing that duo nymph? As I explained before, we're still able to catch these pretty fish. Look at the beautiful colors on that beautiful little wild trout. The trick on these very small streams with very small fish like this is to use very light outfit. This is just a three weight outfit. And that duo nymph, the one that's going to be available on the website at onstreamguide.com, is doing the job. The river's very coloured, there are no fish rising. And before we use the more invasive, heavier nymphs, we try first with the duo. So today is all about nymphing techniques. One of the beauties, of course, of fishing the duo is it's very good for fishing pocket water, like the water you can see directly upstream of me now. Now, most anglers will walk past that. They think it won't hold any fish. But as I hope I can demonstrate with a bit of luck, even in these tough conditions, these pockets do hold fish and, and fish do hold behind these rocks. So what I'm going to do now, uh, with you watching, is fish up through these pockets and hopefully get one or two fish there in water which is largely ignored by other fly fishers.
just chuck that in, in that little pocket there. And these are beautifully spotted, little wild trout. Nice spot on this light outfit. Beautiful little fish. Beautiful. And one came for the dry fly there at the same time. That shows there was more than one fish there because that one actually took on him. And I missed the one on the dry fly. And this is beautiful sport. The river's very high. It's come up, but with the duo fishing through these little pockets, catching these beautiful little wild trout, it's fantastic. And we'll have a look at some of the other nymphing techniques. It's a very good day today for nymphing. one on the dry, so you see a fish just a little below, took the nymph and then it takes the dry and this is the beauty of fishing the duo of course, you're fishing simultaneously the dry fly and the nymph at the same time and if we're fishing it correctly we will be catching fish on all the methods, on both the dry and the nymph. So we've seen there, in literally two minutes fishing, a fish on dry, fish on nymph, in the small pocket or in the small pocket water. Most anglers walk straight past this, assume it doesn't contain fish, uh, and that's a, a big misconception. And from the fish's perspective, this, this environment's perfect. The rocks provide shelter, the rocky bottom dislodges invertebrates that the fish feed on and it's sheltered from predation. And this pool has a nice steep bank and trees and that supplies food from falling insects. So in terms of the environment from the trout's perspective, these small pockets are perfect. And they're not big fish because we're on a small stream today, so adapt your tackle accordingly. I've got a three weight rod, two weight line, a light furled leader and a light duo rig and I'm enjoying sport and I'm the only person here because most people mistakenly believe that the rivers are too high and too coloured with substantial rainfall. But as I've shown, even in these conditions, uh, if you have a good, good knowledge, a good local knowledge, you can still find areas to fish in the stream. There. I saw that fish rise a couple of times, got a nice cover on him, beautiful, this is a nice size trout for this small stream and this uh, often places where better fish lie on streams like this, 
We'll have a look at the beautiful coloration on this little wild trout. There's that dry fly look in the scissors, that duo dry. Saw him rise a couple of times. Just put that duo on him. And there he is. Whoops, and off he goes. Fantastic little fish. Well, because the water's so coloured today and the river's been very high and we've had so much rain, there's not going to be very much rising. So I'm going to be today concentrating on nymphing techniques in small streams. So this is all about nymphing techniques in, in small streams. And I'm going to be predominantly using two methods today. A method called the duo or the clink and dink, where I suspend a nymph under a dry fly. Uh, about 18 inches depth and quite a small nymph and a much more invasive method of fishing nymphs but one that fishes the nymphs much slower and that's uh, Polish style nymphing and for this I'm using weighted bead nymphs and this is one of the flies available at onstreamguide.com it's the polyphytus it's a 3 millimeter, size 12 black beaded tungsten bead Polyphytus, and I fish this on the point and on the dropper I'm using another on-stream guide favourite that's a black magic nymph now most of the insects are dark and so anything black tends to catch the fish's eye and it thinks it might be edible so these two flies I find are a very very good combination and I fish them on a special nymphing leader with an inline indicator. Now these inline indicators are very tough, very hard wearing. I design and make them myself, it's a three stage process. And these indicators with a 46 foot long tapered leader is also available at onstreamguide.com. And I don't use any fly line at all when I'm using these techniques. As you see when I fish, I'm fishing very short range, uh, fixed range. And in the Polish style that I'm going to be using, I'm only using two flies. And I'm not interested in letting the fly swing downstream of me. I'm predominantly looking upstream and fishing upstream. And the flies, because they're weighted, are sinking very quickly into the path of the fish, which can then intercept them. It's a very, very very effective technique. So these are the two small stream nymphing techniques I'll be demonstrating, the duo and pitch line Polish style nymphing. that Polish technique working, just working my way upstream, and again, I took the that little fish, the little beautiful little brownie, took that black magic, some good looking water ahead of me here, so hopefully it will make something a bit bigger. There we go, that's a better fish. That took there. Oh, that's, oh, that was a nice fish, and off it goes. What a shame.
main guard of Sobit ko. That's back match. Beautiful, beautiful. Lots of little wild crowd. Absolutely beautiful to see. And off it goes. And hopefully there'll be something bigger in. So let's carry straight on. Bikes on the toy. That's a fantastic fly available for monsterguide.com. Well, oh, that takes there. Beautiful, beautiful. Little oh, wild trout. Little hard fighting, hard strapping wild trout. So these nymphing techniques now really, really come into their own. The two nymphing techniques we've done today, the duo and the short fixed flying polar star nymphing. Very good sports group technique. And I'm hoping there'll be even more fish in this little spot here, so I'll carry on. the black magic. So you see we've put the duo there through there many times and I'm coming through for the first time with the Polish style nymphid technique I've just described. And there are fish here that ignored the duo and that are taking in this case the black magic on the dropper. So the Polish technique is still producing fish even after the duo uh, failed. Now hopefully, uh, this is a nice little pocket of water up ahead of me, hopefully there might be one or two better fish in there, so I'll carry on and see if there's anything else there right now. And as I say, I've got the polyphytus on the point, that fish is hooked point up, bounces along the bottom nicely, quite a short uh, length, of about 14 inches, and then I've got a a, a dropper with that black magic fly. So it's a very simple but very effective nymphing setup. And I'm fishing it Polish style, which is predominantly upstream. Small streams like this, fixed line nymphing, it's really the Polish style of nymphing that we're predominantly going to use. So I'll carry on. <laughs> 